it Is wouldn't it? happen until, um, I, I think it's not until the end of the year when they would make the migration, but I'm not 100% sure about the timeline. I just do know that it has to be voted on in July to the final um, acceptance. And there's, hopefully there'll be a cost savings, because when you have a pot and then you divide that by mm -hmm. 25 instead of 24 libraries, um, that there should be some savings as well. Has anybody dropped out? No. No. Well, that, now that we will not realize a big savings, because no. it's based on the size right. of the collection. Some. And their collection is nowhere near. No large enough mm -hmm. to have yeah. much of an impact on those I still have costs. memories, and I don't know why, of picking up a book at the Martin uh, Grove Library for see? some reason. Or well, it I might still remember. have been possible. It just and wasn't in CCS. In, right. No, I know, and that's probably, I don't know, I wanted it, you know. Right, right. I mean, you could go to Skokie, too, but they've maintained their own system <sighs> right. for a long time. Right, so. So I think if we're going, I think it benefits um, the North Shore area to have them included. The, there was discussion about some uh, smaller library way far in the northwest suburbs that other libraries were not quite as interested in adding. But I, but they really do believe that Morton Grove will be a benefit to the consortium. Okay. Um, we've been noticing, and really we have to be careful. I noticed it when I backed out mm -hmm. today when I went to go home. The the parking lot is because of the build the apartment building. Um, and also, it's always been that way, where people would drop off mail letters at the drop-off and then come back through. Mm -hmm. But you have to be very careful in the village lot for people who are going through there and um, going yeah. through at an increased yep. speed. Mm -hmm. um, we, it really is a safety concern. And so Mike Boone has been talking with Bridget Berger to see well, if there's something that we can do about that. I think people come in off of park and it's a straight shot right so into their garage mm -hmm. versus oh. coming in the yep. alleys and then having to make kind of a sharp turn. Yeah. So <laughs> it'd be interesting to see what they come up with because right, right. I couldn't think of any good ideas when I was trying to earlier. And they did pave it. They paved over that lot finally too, right? So they paved it better. They now. did pave it. Oh, I didn't. I think think so. So. Just the center part. Yeah, yeah, the center part. Oh, yeah, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. Just no, they did oh, a really right. they did pretty, no, 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 no. pretty amateurish oh. job. Oh, oh, our lot. I mean, the There's village no, the lot. Yeah, yeah, the village oh, right, 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 right. right. Yeah, I thought the, you meant the other one. No, part no, of no. the problem, quite frankly, though, that I that no one will ever explain to my satisfaction is how it is that the alley that the apart the apartment construction mm -hmm. used. Yes. Um, <laughs> Very nice. Gets okay. by with not repaving the whole alley. They did not airlift any of the heavy equipment right. into that spot. They used the alley to get it there. And somehow the village allowed them to pay, repave only the portion adjacent to their building. That makes no sense at all. And that law, that alley is deteriorating oh, at awesome. a rapid rate yep. precisely because. It was not totally repaired from the traffic from constru of heavy construction equipment mm -hmm. for the more than a year that it was used for that purpose. So, you know, they are demonstrating very well how insensitive they are to the safety issues. And as people drive faster, which we predicted in our requests to them more than a year ago, it's just going to get more dangerous. Now, maybe they're waiting until there's a serious injury before they actually consider it. I hope not, but that's the path they're on. Well, now that the village has been alerted, I hope that we can come to some sort of solution before there is a, an issue. So, going on, unfortunately, between the heat and the impending storms, we had to have the Summer Reading Club kickoff party that was um, last night mm. brought inside. So I asked Karen, and there were 166 people attending, which is still a nice number oh, of yeah. attendees, but it would have been much bigger if we uh -huh. had been able to have that outside. But lots of fun, free ice cream, face painting, and, um, and I concert. guess and the concert with Jeannie B. And the Adult Summer Reading Club kickoff 
will be um, Friday, June 22nd with Tom Sharp, who is a member of the Mannheim Steamroller Group. So we also have, um, I guess Jan passed this out, our very own Lisa Bigelow has yeah. published a book, which is really exciting. This is her second, mm -hmm. you know, from a major publishing house, which is lovely. And it has gotten really rave reviews, which is really, really nice. Star reviews. At the and there'll be there'll be a party here yep. on um, July first from mm -hmm. two to three thirty, and she'll be reading from the novel, and she'll also be signing, autographing copies. Nice. And um, yes, and there was an um, this one was from yeah this was in this was in the Beacon, which was really nice. So it was nice to get that coverage. There was this page, and also in the beginning of the section, there was a really lovely picture of Lisa as well. Mm -hmm. So that was nice to have it was. that kind of publicity. Um, I hope you saw our little tote bags that are downstairs. Mm -hmm. They are, um, I think it's really cool. They're made from repurposed vinyl banners Great. by a company in Colorado, and we have 191 of, the, of these bags for circulation. So you... Take out a bunch of books, check out the bag, carry them home, bring everything back. And we also have some for sale, because there have been people who have been interested in, in uh -huh. having the totes. So that was um, really, really nicely well done by um, Colleen Reese, who is in the circulation department. So kudos to her. So Polaris is, we're still getting used to our, our new ILS system. Um, there's going to be, I know Kathleen was interested in the e-resources, there are going to be some fully integrated resources. That comes from Overdrive 3M recorded books, so that's the e-books and the audiobooks, where really you just like check them out right there on our catalog. They're in your patron record, so you can see what you have checked out, what you have on hold. There's also going to be other, which they're calling non-fully -inter integrated resources, and those are things like Hoopla, which, for example, is music that um, you can see the record in our catalog, but you have to go to that website to check them out, and you won't see them in your patron record. But it's really nice to have um, the Hoopla records and to have, it's not every single one because those come and go so much, but it's a what they consider to be the, the most interesting. And it's a good way to dis, for patrons to discover that we have this wonderful resource out there for them. There's also Canopy, which is essentially films and some really wonderful films. So I think both of those, that's a really nice benefit of Polaris. How are you promoting that and showing, doing like a show and tell with your regular? Because unless you are looking at that's really in right. tune, you have no mm -hmm. clue what you can get out of here. I know. Well, well, that's something that we're always trying to let our patrons know. Stephen um, Koble does a lot of classes, and he has done classes that explain Hoopla, that explain Canopy, that explain how to download. Um, e-resources, but yes, I think we need to do a little bit better in that. Some On our web page, we sometimes have, you know, we have like four windows. We have had a window for that, but I think it's really something that we could let people know more of, because there's fabulous resources here that not everybody knows about. Thank you. So speaking about communication, we are also trying to help our internal communication. And we, um, the Adult Services Department and the Youth Services Department have utilized the staff internet much more mm -hmm. than other departments. And now with a new version that's out, um, we're, gonna, we're trying to use that as a communication tool um, with the staff because there's always things that fall through the cracks. And we're hoping, Steve is going to give classes on that, and we're hoping to encourage staff to always check that as a place to, um, we do, we, a place to find out information. We also have our general distribution email list, which we're trying to use much more than we've used before, but communication is a difficult issue. So will that host all the policies for the intranet? The staff policies and forms. Um, we do have that on our shared drive. Okay. I mean, staff has their. It's available for staff to use. I don't know if the plans are to put 
that on the intranet, but it is available now. Well, I probably don't know the difference between the shared uh, drive or the intranet. I think Bedroom. there's potential to do it, uh -huh. so as we get more familiar with the with this in product, um, there may be those additions. It's definitely doable. Okay. Um, have you seen our, our cute little t-shirts that mm -hmm. staff, I know I, we should have one for show and tell. Um, the community services ordered, they're very cute. It's got the logo on the back and a little summer reading club mm -hmm. logo there. And it's fun to see staff um, walking billboards wearing, <laughs> advertising our summer reading club. And the um, our book bike did make its debut at the farmer's market, which was a very um, successful event. Lots of kids were signed up, and adults for Summer Reading Club. Mm -hmm. It's just doing what we hoped it would, would generate interest, because it's so unusual mm -hmm. to see Is it. Has it been out more than once? <laughs> Not yet, but in fact, on our counter there, it's probably gone now, there's a sign-up sheet for different, asking for um, bike riders, and you Kind of have to be strong. Oh, hey! I'm happy to do it. But wait, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm legal to do it or not. Uh, am I legal? Am I, do I get covered by the insurance? I don't know. Well, yes. Okay. We expanded DNO and uh, volunteer uh, liability uh, insurance. Okay, so, I'm covered. We, okay. Uh, so, so yes, you, get out there, Stuart. Can you sign me up, or should I have to come by tomorrow? I come by spend the day and just sign up, find you when you guys and sign up. Uh, Jennifer. Jennifer. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah Jennifer Bartel. Okay. Okay. So okay. Good. She the one who wrote it to the. She did. Market? Well, yeah. she. Wrote it. I think. <laughs> I think some of it was like, especially over the train tracks. Oh and you know that's going up oh and gosh. whatever. Yeah. But yes, yeah, she was the one who brought it over oh. and wrote it. <laughs> Anyone who could ride it up and down yeah. those oh my tracks. Yeah, 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 really. Right really. Here, like, I'll take the challenge. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll do it. I want that picture. I think yeah, we were at four different places. Some of them were like Batman. Yeah, back, oh, yeah. that's not. Too, that's yeah. nice and flat. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll but you still, you have to be. I think you have to be tall and you have to be strong. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you have to be able to have your feet reach the pedals. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a, you know, a big. It's sizable. Yeah. It's an awkward vehicle. Yes, yeah. it is. And once <laughs> it's filled good. with materials, also, then that adds weight to right. it. Right. <laughs> it does pave the alley. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, we're, we're under Betty's. Um, Able Leadership, the Library of Things, is moving mm -hmm. forward, and um, that's really exciting, too. And we're working on rebranding some of the things that we already have that really are things, but we're just going to put it all together in the Library of Things versus the Library of Books or mm -hmm. the Library of AV Materials. This is the Library of Things. What sort of things are we going to rebrand? What's an Uzobot? Is that like a Greek thing? Is that like Uzo? Uzobot. 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 It's a, yes. a, a ro a, like a coding robot. But it's, it's a physical item though. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So currently you're, you were cataloging Wi-Fi hotspots. Right, the hotspots. Uh, we have two hotspots. We also, um, like our, we have this kilometer that you, kilowatt, kilowatt meter that oh, you right. can test how your. Do people still take those out now? Well, maybe now that we rebrand it, they'll yeah, get all maybe, excited about maybe. it. And the <laughs> magnifying device, magnifying devices that we have. So we're going to get some book, uh, some bike locks too. We already have the bike locks, but we're not necessarily we're not putting those in the library of things um, because they're not really check. They're check outable, but they're only checked out for when you're well, at the busy, library, right. and then you bring them, yeah. them Where can back. can patrons see the items? Is there a place that they're... Well, um, we're working on all okay. of so it's that. Not, so it's not on display, okay. No, no, no. And we're working on... Um, I, I have a really good idea on how to do it now in the catalog, but we're working also on how to do it. I mean, just the publicity of it. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a simple idea, but when you think of where are we going to store the things, yeah. Yeah, how oh, are we yeah. going to let people know? Yeah. And, yeah. But it is part of one of the um, objectives in our strategic plan that we're moving forward on. So <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I think it, it will be... Um, a benefit to our patrons mm -hmm. once we finally get this off the ground. Yeah. I don't know if binoculars, we, you know, that's a thought, but right. I'm not sure that there'd be as big a call for them other than when they do the bird walks, which is only the month of May. Or when they go to so. concerts or sports activities. Well, yeah. <laughs> if they don't that's true. That's I hadn't true. thought of that. Look at the stars, too. Look at the stars. Yeah. Binoculars. Uh -huh. yeah. 
And I think, you know, I'm sure we'll have some things that are really popular, and I'm sure we'll have some things mm -hmm. that, you mm -hmm. know, we'll do our best to try and figure out what would work really well. But there's some libraries that um, circulate musical instruments mm -hmm. as part of their mm -hmm. library of things. So there's, you know, the there's cake all kinds bands, of stuff, yeah. um, you know, kitchen equipment. I mean, there's uh -huh. like a million right. different things right. mm -hmm. that you can come up with. So, so. You have to watch your space. And right, right. So are there any questions? More? And you had sent a director's update. They had sent Bradbury. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 15, whatever. Was it 15? Right, but... Okay. Anything else? Oh, okay, so now... Uh-oh, let me go on to... In the um, activity for May, the one... Um, there's two pieces that I... Well, I guess there's a number of them. This is the first time where you can see the local renewals are just huge. Oh, when yeah. you go through the book, sixteen thousand seven hundred and thirty-nine renewals. All of those renewals are reflecting the fact that that's a Polaris fee 